So in neural network, you probably heard that activation functions are important in, and if you, if you don't use activation function, everything is going to be linear, it's going to collapse, it's going to be one line, and um, you won't be able to pick up patterns very well. But what do we mean by that? So for this one, I'm going to focus on ReLU and leaky ReLU, and I'm going to compare it with um, not using any activation functions, so that means that you are just um, having you're just having a linear relationship between your input and output. Each one of the neurons only have linear formula, so no more activation function. But okay, so let's first graph it to we see how do they look like. When we're talking about the activation function ReLU. The way it will look like is, um, so for example, I have one, two, three, and then I have, so this is zero, and for here, I'm going to have, actually, hold on, it's a good idea to, I think it's a good idea for me to show zero is a little bit higher so you can actually see the line. So if I have zero here, one, two, three, and then here I'm going to start from, um, for example, negative two, and then here three. Now this is going to be ReLU. My ReLU would look something like this. I'm going to come all the way. It is zero until I reach zero, and then after zero, I'm going to exactly, for the positive numbers, I'm going to exactly have um, the same values. So this is going to be ReLU, okay? I'm going to first plot all of them, and then after that I'm going to explain why does that make a difference. So then when we're talking about leaky ReLU, right now every negative value that I have, I'm going to get zero for it. And then every positive value that I have, I mean, zero is going to be zero. And then every positive value that I have, it's going to be exactly the same value. So it's going to be zero all the way here. And then after that, it's going to be linear. But overall, when we're looking at it, it is non-linear because this area is not the same number. The negative numbers are not the same. And then, so now... Um, if I want to look at leaky ReLU, leaky ReLU is a little bit different. Um, so now I have three. Okay, I'm going to, th this is zero. So when I'm at zero, I am at zero, right? But now, when I have negative values, I'm not going to be at zero still. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a little bit like, it is leaky, right? So it is slightly goes down. It's not, the relationship is not one to one, but it is slightly, is a little bit going toward negative. It's not going to be zero. It's going to be a little bit less than zero. And then um, when I'm going back up here, again, um, all the values are going to be the same. So the positive ones are going to be the same value, but the negative one are going to decrease a little bit. So there you go. So that's how leaky ReLU looks like. And then, oh my God, I made it too big. Um, and then when we are talking about the um, linear, like if I don't have any activation function, then whatever I get here, like for example, if I have three, two, two, three, um, then if I want to plot the linear relationship, uh, that means I'm not using any activation function, that's going to be a straight line. So whenever you have uh, my, uh, negative two and negative two, the values are gonna be the same and it's just like that till the end. It's just gonna be a straight line. But these ones are non-linear, even though they look very simple. So they can't really pick up very, very complicated patterns, but they still do better than linear. So it, it is very efficient for a moderately complex a complex system, they, they will do good. Okay, now let's look at the application and see 
why does this simple thing is making a huge difference? Imagine I have a picture of four squares. So I want to only recognize the blue squares. Blue squares are important to me. Green squares are not important to me. Okay, so if I use value here, I can um, make the greens to be the, the value of the greens to be minus one. I'm, I can represent uh, green ones with a negative number and then blue ones with a positive number. What ReLU can do is that whenever you're giving, you know, we can make this even better. Instead of this one being green, I'm gonna make this pink. So I'm interested in blue um, squares and I don't care about the rest. So what I can do with ReLU, ReLU is able to um, is able to make anything negative as zero. So it can just not consider those negative numbers. So what happens here is that I'm assigning, or when I'm training my neural network, eventually uh, I'm going to assign a negative number to pink and negative number to green. And then when it is negative, it's going to be zero, right? So it's not going to even recognize this green and this pink what is going to work and, and then i can give positive values to blue and it's going to recognize that there are two blue squares here and just completely ignore this green and pink okay um but sometimes i don't want to completely ignore these two i want to acknowledge that there are other squares in this picture but these other squares are not as important as blue. I'm looking for blue, but I still want to recognize the fact that there are other squares in the picture. And But ReLU cannot do that because any negative value here is going to be zero. But then if I'm using leaky ReLU, we can see that the negative numbers have less importance. They still have something, they still give some values, but they are less important, okay? So I'm, for that reason, I'm going to say the blue ones are going to be a positive number and the green and the pink one are going to have negative numbers, but negative is not going to be zero. It's going to have a little bit of value. So ReLU is not going to recognize anything else in this picture. And it's the only thing that it's going to recognize is the fact that there are two blue squares here. So we are missing information. If it is important for us to know that there are other squares in this image, we're gonna have a problem with ReLU. But then when we are talking about leaky ReLU, leaky ReLU is gonna say, yes, there are two blue squares there, but there are some other squares there too. So it's not gonna give that much importance, but it's going to recognize the fact that there are other squares there too. So when you have a linear activation or nothing, um, you can't pick up on the importance of the features. So it's going, because any value, it's going to exactly match the same value as the output, right? So you cannot, uh, you cannot say, for example, these blue squares are more important than pink and green. It will have harder time to pick up on that. That, that is why the activation functions are more powerful than linear functions and it, they can recognize more complex patterns. So for example, one of those um, use cases would be when you are having, when you're taking a picture and you want to recognize, for example, there's a human in that picture, right? So if you're using the ReLU, you would probably, if it is trained very well, it would say that, okay, so there's a human in this picture, but it doesn't know anything else about it. So, but when you're using leaky ReLU, it recognizes that there is a human in the picture, but it can pick up on the fact that like, um, behind it is a park, but it doesn't really care about like there are trees and stuff like that because the importance is less, but it understands that um, if there is like a white background, um, it's going to be different from if you have like a park or something behind uh, that um, person that you recognize in the picture. 
So reserve more information, lose more information. This one cannot pick up on patterns. 